Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my great pleasure to have uh, Professor Qi Tian here. He's a uh, country associate professor in the Department of uh, <coughs> Computer Science uh, at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Um, he received his uh, PhD degree from the University of uh, UI, uh, Illinois at uh, Ur Urbana-Champaign in 2002. Um, he's uh, received the, the best paper student paper award together with student, his student in ICASP 2006 and uh, best paper candidate in retrieval track in PCM 2007. Um, and so without further ado, uh, I'll let uh, Professor Chang give his talk. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tom, for the introduction. <coughs> uh, I'm, very, I'm very glad to be here to, gi to give a talk about my research project. So the title of my talk is Concept Lexicon Construction and Effective Analysis from Photos to MTV. And uh, during my talk, please uh, feel free to ask me questions or interrupt me any time. First, I'd like to give a brief introduction to multimedia information retrieval. Then we have folks to, up, to talk about the two things, concept-based image retrieval and effective content analysis. Then discuss our proposed approaches. The uh, uh, first one is uh, construct a lexicon of concepts with small semantic gaps for, <coughs> for photos used for concept learning. And uh, we propose uh, integrated uh, MTV effect effective analysis systems for visualization, retrieval, and management. And finally, for each part, uh, we'll end with the conclusions. So first, I'd like to give the acknowledgement to my collaborators. Uh, for the first part of my talk, uh, construction of a le lexicon called LCSS. It's a work with my PhD students, Yi Juan Lu and UTSA, and collaborated with researchers Lei and uh, Wei Ying and Microsoft Research Asia. For the second part of my talk, IMTV, <coughs> uh, it's a joint, joint work with my, with my student, Si Liang, a graduate student in the Chinese Academy of Science, and uh, two faculties over there, Qingming and uh, Su, Su Qiang. <coughs> so first, the motivation for multimedia information retrieval, and as we all know, with the explosive growth of digital media data, there is a huge demand for new tools and systems that enables average users to more efficiently and more effectively search, uh, access, process, manage, and author and share this digital content. <coughs> so early information retrieval is purely text-based, uh, and re also the giant success for them, such as Google. However, to retrieve multimedia objects, such as images, uh, there are too many images to annotate and raise the high cost of human interpretation. And due to the subjectivity of the video content, we know a picture is worth a thousand words. So as an alternative approach to text-based information retrieval, uh, it proposed a content-based retrieval. That means uh, automatically retrieve images, video, and audio based on the video and audio content. Okay, um, <coughs> so content-based image retrieval uh, became more active since 1997, when the internet and web browsing became popular. Okay. So up to date, uh, multimedia information retrieval is truly a very diversified field. It involves different data types, uh, from text, hypertext, uh, image, audio, graphics, video, movie, and a combination of those, and address lots of research problems, such as uh, system, content analysis, service, user, and uh, social business, and many applications. And it's also truly a multidisciplinary field uh, from the people from the database, information retrieval, signal and uh, image processing, graphics, vision, pattern recognition, machine learning, and so on. Okay. <coughs> so one of the biggest challenges in multimedia information retrieval is called semantic gap. So what is a semantic gap? 
uh, it's a gap between the expressing power or description of low-level features and the high-level semantic concepts. So for example, if a given picture of this to the human user, and we can tell it contains a sky, mountain, and a tree, and maybe it's a picture of summer. <coughs> for a picture of this, and for human users, we can either tell this contains a, a face, and it's a female, and maybe it's a pretty face. Okay. However, for the computers, what computers can get is a pixel intensity in terms of the three channels, red, green, or blue. And another is that we can extract features from these images, for example, using color histogram okay. and the video features for these images. So therefore, there exists a big gap between the semantic concept in human minds and uh, the visual features which computer can get. <coughs> so this slide gives the research overview and motiv motivation. There are two types of research. One is a theoretical driven research, and another is the application driven research. So for theoretical driven research, we are consider research in this field uh, uh, in hierarchical level from low level, middle level, to high level. So low level research includes uh, feature extraction, feature selection, and dimension reduction. And uh, in the middle level, most likely it's uh, machine learning techniques, uh, such as uh, active learning, boosting, multimodal fusion. And uh, for the high level, uh, it's a uh, hybrid, such as using both texture and visual information, uh, integrate uh, content with context, and collective intelligence. So for the mid-level and the low-level and middle-level address the challenge problems such as the high dimensionality of the features, small sample sets. For the mid-level to high-level machine learning techniques and some high-level semantic computing is used to address the semantic gap problem. So another line of the research is application driven is mostly search and what kind of service can we provide it's beyond search. Applications such as uh, image retrieval, video search, music sharing, friends making, and uh, online advertisement. <coughs> so for my research ob objective of, of this work is uh, we are trying to develop new theoretical driven approach that address the challenge of the semantic gap and uh, uh, look, investigate new application beyond, simple, beyond search. So we, this talk comes to two parts. The first part is a concept lexicon for photos. Second one is a effective analysis for MTV. <coughs> so this is my first, first part of my talk. So far, many content-based image retrieval systems have been built. So to show you a few examples, this is first commercial systems by IBM, Quebec, Curry by Image Content. And uh, other image retrievals, such as the uh, trademark re retrieval systems and the uh, sketch retrieval systems, <coughs> 3D object retrieval systems, and uh, uh, 3D protein retrieval systems. And we can say uh, there is uh, more than 100 systems developed since the uh, 1990s, and this list is still growing. <coughs> so in recent years, we have seen a trend from generic image retrieval, generic uh, content-based image retrieval, to concept-based image retrieval. So for concept-based image retrieval, the first task, task is to build a concept-based image database. And uh, for that, the first step is to have a concept lexicon used for data collection. <coughs> After you have the ima images, uh, we, do, we perform the feature extraction and uh, each image is represented as a point in a high-dimensional feature space. And these features of image can be very high, from tens to hundreds to even thousands to thousands. <coughs> so next step is to data modeling. Uh, usually, because the curse of dimensionality, the first step is to perform dimension reduction and use some statistical estimation method to model each class, model, uh, for example, trees, uh, mountains, using Gaussian or mixture of Gaussian. <coughs> so next step is uh, for retrieval. For new image coming in, we perform classification-based uh, tasks. So there are two types of the 
methods. One is to classification, another is uh, to simulate ranking. And uh, so you can, you can give, tell us which this image is uh, full in this uh, green re region or full in this uh, red region to be tree or long tree. And we, we, we retrieved the results are uh, output to users for feedback. So for this concept-based uh, re image retrieval, so this is some related work in concept next second. Uh, there is a, a famous uh, Caltech 101 object database, uh, Caltech 256. And there is some uh, popular concepts in the Flickr.com, like uh, wedding, travel, party, Japan, family, for example. Uh, this shows uh, uh, certain, uh, 39 concepts uh, from the uh, SCOM, large scale ontology for multimedia, and this is for broadcast news. So some concepts such as uh, sky, rose, car, and much events. And uh, some uh, video concepts uh, called uh, media meal, one on one, one on one video concepts uh, obtained from the video track data base. Uh, hmm? so some people call those uh, words uh, uh, captions or oh, something. So you, you, you call it concepts and you call it keywords. So you know the same thing? Or? Uh, we, yeah, basically the same thing. Uh, it, it's annotation, an image can contain uh, multiple keywords. Right. And uh, uh, we assume we can, it was conceived multi, we can consider multiple concepts in one image. So the largest uh, uh, concept of lexicon is called uh, large scale concept ontology for multimedia. So it's a joint work between CMU, Columbia University, and IBM. They developed uh, about a, a thousand uh, uh, concepts uh, from, for broadcast news. However, uh, the, the biggest problem for this approach is uh, concept lexicon selection is simply by manual selection or totally ignored in previous works. Uh, so the, all the le uh, previous uh, lexical because of the difference of semantic gaps among concepts. And there is no automatic way to select a concept. So motivation for this work is uh, we believe concepts with small semantic gaps are likely to be better modeled and retrieved than concepts with larger ones. Okay. So, so far, there's very little research has been done on quantitative analysis of semantic gap. So what are the well-defined semantic concepts for learning, and how do you automatically find them? Uh, so we did some, some preliminary work towards this direction. Our objective is, is to automatically construct a lexicon of high-level concepts with a small semantic gap. We call it this lexicon LCSS. Well, ideally, we, there are two properties for this LCSS. Concepts should be commonly used. Concepts are expected to be visually and semantically consistent. <coughs> so to work on this project, we start to look at the web images because uh, web images have, have rich textual features. They can have a file name, title, and surrounding text. So this is just uh, a few examples for this, for this picture of tiger, the title and the description. This is a water lily and descriptions. And we believe the input title and comments are good semantic descript descriptions of images. And those text features are much closer to the semantics of images than the visual features. <laughs> so this slide shows the framework of our lexicon construction. So the first step is to call the image from the web. Uh, we have called uh, over meaning, uh, 2.4 meaning uh, photos from the internet website. We built the visual index system for these images and also built the uh, texture index for these images. The next is uh, we built a confidence map, which we call the nearest labor confidence score. I will describe uh, its meaning in the next slides. Then I'm going to re rank those images based on this nearest labor confidence score, in short, an NCS score. So the next the third step is to construct a content and the content sparse matrix 
based on this uh, NNCS score. Then we applied uh, a recently newly proposed uh, a clustering algorithm called uh, affinity propagation. So that's uh, uh, proposed by Frey uh, and published uh, in Science 2007. <coughs> and finally, we extract the keywords from those uh, cluster centers and we rank them to get our concepts lexicon. So step one is data collection. So, so far we collected 2.4 million web images from five photo forums. And the reason we choose those photos, because the photos have high quality and rich textual information. Let's just show a few examples. So this is an image of, of sunset okay, with some descriptions, red rose with some descriptions. And uh, we extract uh, 64 dimensional global visual features in this, in this time and it's mostly for the color feature. It concludes the uh, color moments, uh, color curling ground, okay, consists of spatial information, and the color texture moments. <coughs> so the second step is uh, once we have these video features, we can, for each image in a database, we can find uh, his uh, k nearest uh, labels in the video space. Then we compute the, uh, this image and its uh, nearest labor compute its uh, sim similarity in terms of the texture features. And uh, this is called the uh, NNCS score. And it, we rank those NNCS scores to get the top candidate images. So this is the algorithm. So this is an image, and uh, this is, uh, uh, say, five or 10 uh, nearest labors of these images in the visual space. Then we compute the uh, text similarity between each label to this image. We get the uh, average of them, get this uh, called the NNCS score, nearest the label company store. And we can, we can see the higher the NNCS value, the smaller the semantic gap, which means uh, those images can are uh, both visually and text textually consistent. We compute the NNCS scores for all 2.4 million images and we choose the, the K, the nearest labor number, to be 500. <coughs> and among the 2.4 million images, we select 32, 36, to, 36 to 31 candidate images with top NNCS score. The reason we choose this number, uh, consider its relatively large size and also the memory concern. We need to construct a similarity matrix uh, used for affiliate propagation clustering algorithm. <coughs> so third step, is, we, third step is uh, after we have this top, uh, this NCS scores for the top candidate images, we construct uh, content and context similarity um, matrix is very sparse and apply affiliate propagation clustering to clustering them. Okay. <coughs> so what is affiliate propagation? It's a new a clustering algorithm, it's fast for large-scale data and uh, require no prior information. For example, we don't need to set uh, uh, what's the number of the clusters. So, so far, we have the 36 2,231 by 36 2,031 context con similarity matrix. Okay. So let's show you the idea. So for each image, uh, IJ, uh, II, Okay, first we find that uh, his uh, K nearest uh, labors in the visual space. And we also find uh, his K nearest labors in the texture space. And we found uh, in this case, like uh, image IJ, okay, are both nearest labors to II in the visual space and uh, texture space. Okay, we consider they are the nearest labor of IJ are the nearest labor of II in terms of both the content and context. So also for this case, is, uh, uh, this uh, uh, IK, IG, IG are the content and context nearest labors for, for image II. So we set the, uh, this similarity, uh, uh, similarity matrix element PIJ to be its overall similarity value. And this similarity value consists of two parts, visual similarity and texture similarity. Lambda is just the weight. So to equally with uh, texture similarity and visual similarity, we set the lambda simply to 0.5. Okay. How many similarity? 
Oh, um, <coughs> we use a standard uh, standard method for so for each image for each uh, image you have a you have a, a surrounding text you have the keywords and uh, so you have a text feature vector for each image and we comp and compute the cosine distance between these two and that is used for texture similarity. Text feature vector is constructed. So how do you basically how do you how do you go from the like set of keywords to this metric space? Uh, basically, you can uh, use the like a, you have a long list of the keywords and uh, the term, uh, like uh, uh, the occurrence of these keywords uh, of these key, uh, keywords in this surrounding text of the image. So it is in, it's one, it's not, it's zero. Okay. In this case, how does it uh, take? Uh, Synonyms into account. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether this is taken into account in, in the current algorithm. But it, we just, this is uh, just some standard uh, uh, technique we used to, to compute the texture similarity. Okay. <coughs> so once we have this nearest. Uh, 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 co content and context uh, similarity matrix, we apply affinity propagation to class them. Then, using a standard uh, text based keyword extraction, uh, to extract the keywords from the, uh, from the surrounding text for those uh, cluster center images and get our concept lexicon. Okay. So, this is the results. This result shows the top 50 keywords in our constructed SAS lexicon. Uh, and roughly, we put into like a five category, like a scene, object, color, season, and others. And you can see uh, the first uh, rank, the uh, number one rank uh, image is the uh, sun concept is a uh, sunset. Consider we, we apply it to the photos. So sunset followed by sky, beach, garden, lake. And uh, since we used uh, 64 dimension color features, uh, so all the colors like uh, uh, blue, red, yellow, green, pink, uh, are are within the top 50 uh, keywords. And some of the other objects, flower, those, butterfly. Okay. You don't really have categories when you do the affinity propagation. Do you actually cluster them? Or wait, wait. Do, you, do you end up with a number of clusters? Yes, it's automatically. How many, uh, how many clusters do you end up with? Uh, it, 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 it's about, uh, for this, uh, so remember, we have a 36, 36 yeah, so someone, so we have a, 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 don't remember, a, two, a, a few hundred clusters. So that, 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 uh, the approach you're doing, the propagation, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, the spectral cluster. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so to experiment is, uh, the first experiment we want to test uh, the property uh, images of top concepts should have a smaller semantic gaps. So this is a, uh, we look at the top 15 keywords uh, in our uh, lexicon, uh, sunset, flower, uh, blue, red, uh, rose, and we compute its nearest labor confidence score. So for each keyword, we randomly select 500 photos for that keyword. Then, then we can say we computed its uh, the earliest labor confidence score, and we can say uh, its confidence score uh, decreases uh, similarly with its rank. So it's consistent. So which means uh, uh, the images labeled with the top keywords have higher confidence value. So the second uh, experiment is we want to test the property is uh, concepts are commonly good semantic descriptions and can be used for good annotation. We apply this lexicon constructed to UW, University of Washington uh, data set. It contains uh, 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 1,109 images. Each image has five labeled ground truth concepts, and totally there are 350 unique words. And uh, so starting with image, we do feature, video feature extraction and do retrieval based on video content. Then this is a rank based on video content. This is a, a extracted keywords for each image from its surrounding text. Now, then we can build the annotation. Uh, the, the, we apply the search-based image annotation algorithm developed by uh, uh, a group in Microsoft Research Asia. And we apply our construct lexicon 
to refine annotation constructed by this SBIA. And we use uh, two strategies. One is uh, annotation planning, and the second is uh, annotation readiness ranking. Finally, output the final annotation to the, to the user. We can comp compute its processing and uh, record. Okay. So this uh, shows the results. And uh, the x-axis shows the, this is a precision, this is a record. Okay, this, uh, the x-axis is a number of concepts we used uh, to, for uh, annotation refinement. So zero means that uh, we don't use any of the concepts in our construct lexicon to do the uh, uh, refinement. And you can see with the increase of the number of concepts uh, and the performance of the refinement keep stable when number of concepts used is equal or larger to 100. <clears throat> and also you can see uh, the refinement distinctively improves uh, over the original annotation uh, process in terms of processing and recall. Okay, this is the result. This is after. Yes. The ground truth, we have the ground truth. Uh, that that's the ground truth. Why are you I thought you tried to improve it. You tried to refine your state language. I'm a little bit confused. Yes. So you have this database from UW. So each, each, each image has some annotations. Yes. Use. Uh, one is uh, this is ground truth, uh, but the keywords extracted are from the web. Oh, okay, got it. So you have, okay, you have two sets of labels. Yes. So in a summary, so we quantitatively study and formulate the semantic GAN problem. And we propose a level framework to automatically select visually and semantically consistent concepts. And uh, LCSS is the first lexicon in the field for the concepts with small semantic gap. And we consider some potential applications for data collection, concept modeling, image annotation, and uh, refinement. Uh, Query optimization and the information retrieval. Okay. So, any questions? So, this concludes with my first part of the talk. Okay. Okay, this uh, talk about my second part of my talk. So, I wonder about the visual consistency. So, by definition of your visual features, um, your images that you kind of cluster together, together that you de declare to be close visually are indeed very, very close because you use global features. Oh, uh, global features? You, you, yeah. So if, for example, if I have two, two images, on one of, and they're a bit larger than, you know, than just crop, they're not cropped tightly around the object, okay? So on one of them I have a rose in the left part of the image, and on the other one I have rose on the, okay, so you'll, you'll match them on this, wait, in, wait. In, in this case, yes, because you use, uh, no, no, I need, I need a different example. Well, basically what I'm trying to say that uh, your choice of features uh, dictates a very particular, uh, very particular uh, definition of visual similarity, which can be too restrictive. That's what I. All right, my because uh, we, we, uh, one is uh, this uh, construct lexicon is a critical dependent on the feature you used. So right now, we, uh, to test the idea, we use the color features. Okay, we construct uh, what are good concepts with small, with small semantic gap for these color features. And uh, of course, this, uh, if you have uh, text features, this will change. So the application is uh, you can, you can for, so if you look for concepts, and we only have, uh, uh, we have both text features or uh, color features, then you can decide which features are good to retrieve these concepts. So one of the future work is to. So you can you can do it kind of back, yeah. Yes. I understand. Also, final question for this part. <laughs> um, the precision and recall on the UW database is still less than 0.2, so it's still rather small, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So for second part of my talk is. Uh, we consider MTV effective analysis. The motivation is uh, we have an explosive increasing amount of MTV data. And uh, MTV becoming uh, increasingly important because uh, MTV basically is music plus video. And uh, it can give the audience both the audio and the video uh, experience. And the shortcomings of current MTV classification uh, scheme is uh, they are manually 
done and uh, difficult for automatic analysis and not intelligent enough. So it's harder to uh, retrieve those abstract uh, concepts, MTVs. <coughs> so in the meantime, uh, effective content analysis is getting popular in multimedia information retrieval. So what is effective? Effective is a feeling or emotion that is distinguished from the calculation, thought, or action. So consider uh, some of the real multimedia retrieval scenarios. For example, user is interested to uh, search for a subset of licensed holiday pictures and to show them to friends. Or search the most appropriate background music for the given situation. Or search for the most impressive video clips and search for the image I like most. Of course, this is going to be a very challenging and difficult task. So in order to uh, to solve this, our alternative approach is to rather to do that, we search for mood. Okay? We search for the, uh, the images matches the user's profile. You user have an interest or low interest. You user likes them or dislikes them. So we propose the effective analysis for MTV retrieval and management. So for MTV effective analysis, we expect it to be more consistent with the uh, human abstract thinking and understanding, more intelligent and effective to retrieve and manage MTV according to their effective states, and uh, uh, can offer some pri promising applications based on user's performance analysis. For example, we can use it for uh, learning the user's performance and for video uh, filtering, video recommendation, sharing, or even for friends making, because uh, we believe the persons with similar similarities are likely to be friends. So talk about this effective content analysis. There are two types of approach, two categories. The first category is a categorical effective content analysis. It has a discrete states of effective, such as a fear, angry, anger, happy, disgust, upset, surprise. And the classification can be down to this effective states. We call it effective classification. Uh, it has a limited flexibility, but a simple easy to build, and suitable for some specific problems. Another category of effective content, content analysis is dimensional effective content analysis. It has a dimensional effective model for effective state representation and modeling. It can offer infinite, infinite continuous, and complicated effective uh, states. So this is a dimensional effective model. It has two states, effective states, arousal and awareness. What is arousal? Arousal represents intensity of affective experience, such as uh, from calm, peaceful, to energized, or excited, or horror. Um, Willingness represents the level of pleasure, from highly pleasant to extremely unpleasant. So that's for in this uh, two-dimensional space. We have uh, extre this is uh, access for willingness. For extremely unpleasant to highly pleasant, for the arousal, peaceful to energized. So, for example, we can, we can quantitatively uh, partition this space into four quadrants. Okay. Excited, energetic, anxious, frantic, anger, and the depression, sadness, peaceful, relaxed, for example. So, this is a framework of our proposed uh, integrated uh, MTV effective system. It consists uh, Three modules. The first module is uh, effective analysis. So, given an MTV database, we first want to extract effective features, then do effective modeling, and uh, consider user uh, plays a very important role in effective analysis. So, we keep the user in the loop. We do then get the user's feedback, user's ground truth through interactive weight adjustment. Okay. The second module is uh, MTV retrieval and management. And uh, we first propose effective visualization. And based on that, we propose MTV retrieval and management. So, so the third module is uh, user profile analysis. So we, you have a user profile, for example, the play history. Then we can identify user's prefer performance. And that can be used for MTV recommendation, can be used for user effective clustering and social network construction. This is a screenshot of the, uh, the real system. 
And uh, first time you can uh, register account and uh, log in. After logging, if you're first time user, in, a, in this uh, here, uh, the empty ways in the collection will be uh, can be displayed alphabetically to you. And after you have used the systems for a while, uh, the empty ways recommended will be displayed here. Okay. So these are the three modules. First one is a uh, feature extraction and uh, inter interactive weight adjustment. And I can show the demo by the end of the talk. And uh, the last module is a uh, MTV effective retrieval, MTV effective management. <coughs> so for the first module, MTV effective analysis, MTV data, you do arousal feature extraction, Williams feature extraction, then you do arousal modeling, Williams modeling. Okay. And then another part for the users, through so interactive weight adjustment, they can give a personalized weight and use that to update the model. For the features, or also features, we use uh, we test uh, a lot of the uh, both video and audio features, uh, and we test uh, most we, for a lot of features like extract motion intensity, short stretch rate, zero crossing rate, rhythm based features, and uh, temporal and bit strength. For the valence features, we use lightning, uh, considering. Uh, for the purpose of affecting emotions of the viewers, uh, some um, blue, white can be used uh, to establish things. And the situation, uh, color, energy, rhythm, regularity, and the pitch. And uh, after all the features are extracted, they are normalized between 0 and 1. How do you, how do you normalize it? Oh. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, light, light, lighting is uh, we compute the uh, like a gray, blue, white. Uh, yeah, I forgot the details, and uh, it should be in the paper. <coughs> so for us, second one is for effective modeling. So we consider a simple linear combination, and uh, this is uh, the arousal feature uh, and the weightings feature. Uh, this is the weight, this are the normalized feature. And uh, then these features can be initially set based on some statistical study from the users. Then we can do interactive weight adjustment through this uh, uh, interface. So a video is being played, the user can watch it and give a f uh, four scores to arousal, one to piece four, two, two to a little piece four, three to a little intense, four to very intense. And uh, two scores to Venus, sad, a little sad, happy, and very happy. And this can be updated and recorded, and will be trained to update the weights in this modeling. <coughs> so the second module is MTV retrieval and management. Okay, the first we propose uh, effective visualization. So human motion is uh, now visualized in two dimensional continuous effective space. And each MTV that can be visualized as a point in this uh, uh, arousal radiance space. So this is an example. Uh, this black dot uh, MTV. And this is uh, MTV for, uh, for in this uh, happy and energetic category. There's some MTVs send blue. So a good uh, effective relation should provide the following functionalities. First, uh, should provide an overview of all the MTVs. Should uh, uh, have a good effective structure preservation. And it should be uh, had a vid uh, visible for all the MTVs to be uh, to browse the MTV. <coughs> so, so then, for MTV retrieval and management, uh, we propose this effective collage. It's a combination of video collage and effective you know, effective space. Uh, so this is a uh, every space. First, we have a navigation window. And in this navigation window, we can select a uh, course region, and the effective uh, class of the course region are displayed here. And we just quant quantitatively um, quantize into 10 by 10 blocks. Okay. And uh, we can zoom in, and can, we can select uh, a fine region on this course region, and this is the effective class of the fine region. Then you can choose a class, and this is a class per view. 
Then for retrieval, we can also start uh, by drawing a mouse, a rectangular arrow in this effective space. Then get the effective collection of the cost region. Then if you're interested, uh, for example, in this region, you can get a fine region, uh, effective collection. And uh, if you're interested in this one, it kind of preview will be displayed here. And uh, MTVs uh, filled in, in this region will be retrieved and returned here. And can click to play. So visualization can be also used for MTV management. So for example, when you log in, you can choose uh, uh, one of the default uh, categories, uh, like uh, happy, sad, crazy. And uh, MTVs in each category will be displayed here. And uh, <coughs> the position of this category will be displayed here. Uh, this is an uh, effective uh, clutch of this region. This empty means uh, there is no MTVs for in this region. Okay. And you can also generalize or customize your own category. You can select uh, a region, an uh, effective space, and give a name. <coughs> so module three is a user profile analysis. Uh, we uh, consider effective performance means uh, user's preference for certain uh, effective states. For example, if I like to play happy music a lot, so my preference is towards happy. And this uh, effective preference can be learned from user's play history. And we, we identify this by first construct a user preference matrix. It records the accumulative effective preference uh, reflected from the play history. It's an M by A matrix and it can be updated each time when MTV is being played. Uh, for example, uh, this is uh, AV space MTV. This, if this uh, MTV is being played, we can update its value in the uh, user preference matrix. So each element value in the effective uh, uh, of user preference matrix represents the accumulation of users' effective preference. So we identify preference points from this matrix. So preference points should be uh, representative elements for the matrix to describe users' effective preference. And it should be representative, which means that it should be located relatively center position and it should be preferred, which means that it should have a large values indicating high preference degree. And we can identify those uh, preference points by the same affinity propagation algorithms. So this example, so this is identified two preference points. And uh, these are uh, other long zero elements uh, in the user effective matrix. Okay, so after we learn the user's performance, we can do MTV recommendations. So, Compared to the traditional music recommendation, effective performance recommendation uh, should be more uh, consistent with users' personal tests. It's more friendly, intelligent, effective. And uh, after user login each time, MTV will be displayed in an order uh, based on the recommendation rate, okay, learned from the user's history. Okay. So for example, this is uh, identified preference effective states. And MTVs in this region should be uh, ranked, give a higher recommendation rate and display to the user. Okay. Application two is the uh, use of effective uh, uh, clustering and can build a social uh, network. Okay. We can group multiple users with uh, similar personality and char or characters. Uh, it can be used for product recommendation. So if you have the same taste for movie or for MTV, program the same taste for uh, movie, music, electronics, or uh, sports. And for social networking, you can make friends and uh, doing photo and video sharing. So other potential applications could be used for uh, track user, identify user, uh, and to uh, know its personality or character, such as fortune teller. Okay. So this is my experience. So to, first is our MTV data, data set. We collected uh, 552 MTVs in MPEG format. And uh, the collection, it, we downloaded this uh, M MTVs from internet or converting them from DVDs. Uh, we consider this uh, collection is uh, representative because it has a different resolutions and visual qualities. It has a different languages, English, Chinese, French, Korean, Japanese, and uh, has a released in different periods, okay, classical songs and some newest ones, and different styles, country music, jazz, rock, uh, and so on. Uh, I just, 
Secondly, so we do perform the user study for ground truth preparation, and we invite the 10 participants, one female, nine males, ages 21 to 28. Each scores 150 uh, select MTVs, and they each watch MTV and give two scores, A score and V score, to each MTV, and scores is one, in terms of one, two, three, four, four quantitative levels. And the ground truth uh, the corresponding uh, range for A feature, V feature is in the for one corresponds to zero two point two five, okay, uh, to represent a very peaceful, little peaceful, a little intense, and very intense. The similar for valence features. <coughs> so experiment one is uh, we do uh, validation of effective features, and uh, <coughs> uh, so this is average the. Uh, Average the arousal only precision rate and the average uh, valence only precision rate. We consider each feature independently. So this is uh, for a feature. This is a short switch rate, uh, motion intensity, bit strength. Uh, this are tempo, lightning, color, energy, pitch, saturation, uh, rhythm, regularity, and you can see clearly all APR and APRs are well about 25 percent. Okay, 25 percent is considered a random guess. Okay, because there are four quantitative levels. And uh, so based on the feature validation results, initial weight in the effective modeling can be said as this, 1.3 for short switch rate and lightning because there's a higher uh, precision rate for SSR and, uh, and lightning. Okay. 1.2 for this and the pitch, one for the rest of the features. <coughs> so experiment two is a validation of effective modeling. For each participant in a user study, the 150 scored MTVs is divided into two groups. Group A contains eight MTVs for interactive adjusting weights. Group T, Group B contains uh, 70 MTVs for computing uh, the performance. Performance in terms of three measures. So arousal only processing rate, valence only processing rate, and overall processing rate, including both at A and V features. It's a more strict requirement, uh, OPR. So this shows the results of 10 users, user 1 up to user 10. And this is the overall processing, uh, overall average rate for uh, OPR, APR, and VPR. And this x-axis is the uh, runs of interactive weight adjustment. Y-axis is the processing rate. So you can see uh, for all the users, OPR, APR, and uh, VPR improved with interactive weight adjustment improvements. Uh, from for OPR overall, uh, it's 58.7% to 71%. For APR, it's 84.4% to 80%. And uh, this uh, just uh, uh, shows uh, we have a, we have a, a really uh, valid features and modeling. So experience three is uh, we test the user's satisfaction for MTV retrieval and management. <coughs> we divide the effective space even into four by four which is 16 regions. Uh, accordingly, we test uh, users' degree of satisfaction in each of these effective uh, regions. We compute regional precision rate and regional record rate. And this is the result. So this is region 1, 2, up to 16. Okay. This is overall uh, average precision uh, rate. Uh, regional precision rate is overall average regional record rate. And you can see the uh, the uh, above uh, well above uh, fifty percent. I don't think this is a low number because uh, uh, the worst case is random guess. It's uh, sixty one of the sixteen ratings is about uh, six point six seven percent. So and we can say it performs better in some ratings and other ratings. For example, in this rating, a very high precision rate because uh, it has the most intense arousal. And uh, we're highly present. <coughs> so the last experiment is to do user preference analysis. Step one is uh, we're trying to learn user's preference. 
we invited five users to do the study, one female, one female and four males. Each is asked to play at least 100 MTVs uh, according to uh, their own choice. And this shows, uh, this, this black dot shows the, the MTV played by each of the users. And this is uh, identify the preference point for user one, identify the preference point for user two, and for, uh, so, far, so on for user five. Okay. Then the next step is uh, we do, based on the preference analysis results, we recommend MTVs to each of the user. So same five users. So each one is watch the top 30 recommended uh, new MTVs and uh, rate them in five scale scores. You extreme dislike, dislike, uh, okay, uh, neutral feeling, enjoy, and enjoy a lot. So this is the uh, final results, histogram results. And overall, it can be seen about 80% of recommended MTVs are enjoyed by the users. Okay. So now I can show you uh, uh, show the uh, quick demo of this. So. Uh, so this is user interface. Now uh, I can, since I already registered, uh, uh, I can log in. So when you log in, okay, uh, your recommend MTVs will be displayed here. Oh, those are just the Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, names for the songs. <coughs> the first one is the Chinese song. Okay. Uh, so if you choose, uh, okay, choose one, uh, choose, uh, see, you can play. <laughs> Okay, then uh, of, uh, this, uh, this is the modules for feature extraction and interactive weight adjustment. This shows the interactive weight adjustment. So this is the interface. Now we can start. So to start, so I, So you, you can users users uh, will watch MTV and give one of the scores to this MTV. Okay, uh, in terms of one, two, three, four, and uh, minus one to, to two. And after you finish, you can set. Okay, this is a wait for this one. Uh, this is a preference uh, from the users, and you can pop to the next, the next MTV, and you can so on to. Like uh, establish your own preference. Okay. okay. So the next uh, part is uh, for effective uh, management and retrieval. So for management. Okay. Now we, you click on this one. You can. So this is MTVs. Uh, this are 552 MTVs displayed in this effective space, and uh, you can choose one of the default category. For example, if I choose uh, happy and uh, Pleasant, okay. So all the it's up, it's up here, okay. So MTVs in this region will be displayed here. Let me choose to play one. So uh, just to see. So that's the uh, so the mood of this MTV is learned to be a uh, uh, very uh, happy uh, but kind of peaceful. So this shows the affected clutch of this category. And uh, if you ch change it to, let's say, uh, frantic and angry, okay, this uh, say, choose one to play. Uh, it's, uh, it shows the MTV over in this region. It's uh, automatically learned. So if you choose, uh, say, energetic and happy, and uh, play one. So it's a uh, uh, MTV in this region. So last one, you can also customize your category. You can choose, uh, uh, say, I choose a region in, in this, choose a window in this region. 
Okay, and uh, then I give a, because I choose the center part, so it's a mixed region of the flow. So you can say this is a mixed. Okay, I can generate this category, and then you can choose this category mixed. So all, all the MTVs in this region will be displayed here. And if you choose to play, Okay, so this is for uh, management. So for retrieval part, um, to start is um, you can. This is effective uh, uh, space. You can choose if I'm interested in this uh, in this part. Okay. Oh, there is, uh, there is something uh, wrong here. Should be dis displayed all the clients for this course region. Let me just uh, restart it. Okay, this is a, uh, uh, if you select the course region uh, to start, this is a client of the course regions. And uh, now, if I say I'm interested in uh, in this region, uh, I'm interested in this region. Okay, this is a, a client of the course region. Then you say I'm particularly interested in here. I choose uh, a fine region. Okay, the uh, uh, client of the fine region is deeply here. I say I'm interested in this one. Okay, it will be played and. Uh, the MTVs for in this region will be displayed here. Um, for this case, for this region, it just has one, MT, uh, one MTV. Okay. So you can say, so this, this MTV is actually one in this region. It should be correspond to the happy and uh, energized. Okay. So if you choose a different one, Okay, there are two MTVs found in this one. Okay, so that, that's basically the idea of the, of the uh, system. So finally, let's end with the conclusion. So in, in the future work, uh, uh, we're trying to, with the help of the music knowledge and the cinematography study, uh, we're trying to develop uh, more powerful effective features and uh, get a better effective modeling. And we're interested to also develop a network-based uh, MTV system for use effective clustering and reason, build an effective social network, we can say multiple users, and use web as a platform. Okay. So that's the uh, end of my talk. Okay. So any questions? Yeah, yeah. For the effective uh, uh, label, I mean, Classification. So you kind of for each music you you label it with two with two dimensions. Right? So uh, I wonder if that's uh, that that's really is what people do. Like like each person may like some music, you know, uh, on each of your your, your quadrants. But the, like high and energetic, uh, some people may also like some music inside the side and uh, the other one for like the side and not energetic. So. Uh, but uh, even though two two musics or maybe uh, they are close in your space, in your effective space, but they may not may not may not respond to that to what people prefer, right? So so somebody may may like one of those, may not like the other one, even though they are close in your space. Right? So I wonder if that effective space is a good way you know, to actually cluster or to under uh, retrieval. Oh, um, I said. Finally, eventually, a good realization should preserve their effective uh, relationship uh, in 2D. Uh, and uh, so users still could have a, a multiple preference. So you could, uh, uh, that can be identified uh, from the preference uh, uh, point identification. And uh, so if there is, uh, hopefully, is if they are close but not preferred by the users, uh, and hopefully we can provide a way to to uh, to to change that, like to the users to like the visualization of the images. Uh, if they are uh, they are visually close uh, in the in the 
in the 2D dimension, but uh, in fact, they belong to different persons. We, we consider some of feedback can be, can be given to solve that problem. Yes, but you are effectively, what you are doing, you are projecting those uh, feature points. You are projecting to two-dimensional space. In this, you are probably losing some information. Maybe the real underlying structure is three-dimensional space. So it would be better probably to infer the number of dimensions from the data from user study. So, yes, the point one, uh, but of, uh, we, the reason we use the two-dimensional is uh, it can be visualized by, by the users. Uh, or this can be extended to three-dimensional. Yeah. But of course, uh, the good structure may not be a two-dimensional, maybe higher dimensional, but it can, cannot I be. See, I imagine that there are probably a lot of music which it's very hard to label. It's very hard to tell. It's uh, you know, sad and happy. I guess, I mean, there are some music which uh, there are some parts of it. It's happy and some parts of it. It's sad. Uh, right, that, that, that's yeah, that's which, uh, right now we, we just, uh, for that one, if uh, like mood changes within uh, MTV, we can do a, a, a dynamic update its position in a, a relation space. But now we are just showing each MTV has one mood. Yeah. Because for the processing, we didn't process all the, 50, uh, all the five minutes MTV. We, we fitted 50 seconds in the center part. Yeah. And we start con considering it as a one mood, one realization. So a typical MTV set is uh, solid. So oh, we have tens of solid. Yeah. So how do, you, do you think this thing is extendable to larger scale? Uh, well, actually, that's what we're going to try next uh, step. We're going to get uh, like thousands, ten thousands of MTVs and uh, test the algorithm. Yeah, thanks.